At this point in time, very few anime movies could stand on their own, with the exception of Studio Ghibli's works. There was surprises like Akira, but most of the time, films were either received mediocrely or tacked onto pre-existing media like TV shows or other movies. And very often, this would be a dual case, where the movie was riding off the success of an established franchise and didn't do so well critically. But then, in 1995, the year where Ghibli's sting was just low enough, Production IG released Ghost in the Shell, a landmark sci-fi crime thriller that would ironically spur its own franchise of TV shows, manga, and additional movies. So, how does the movie that launched a dozen spin-offs fare on its own? Frankly, if this was the only property of the series, it'd be a damn impressive one-off. Meiji Kusanagi is an android who leads a security team in a cybernetic city in Japan as she and her team are tasked to take down the Puppet Master, another AI entity who controls other androids by taking over their shell and rewriting their ghost. You see, that's what the title of the film refers to. And so, it's the cat and mouse chase of the free-moving soul of an AI versus an AI and her team stopping his rampage. Sort of. You see, when the Puppet Master is seemingly destroyed, he somehow manages to reach Major Kusanagi in his own way, where he has a conversation with her about how she manages to hold on to her humanity, and how he freely bounces around controlling others, employing her to merge with him. Who will ultimately win this nihilistic game of AI wits? Or rather, can we truly say the end result even has a quote-unquote winner? There were three movies I was afraid of tackling this month. Akira, another film a bit down the line, and this one. Like Akira, Ghost in the Shell is so widely recognized as this huge film that got a lot of people's attention that what else is there to say about it? It has an interesting story, fascinating philosophies, memorable characters, a distinctly stylish atmosphere, and an atmospheric style. But as you know, giving up is not how we roll here. Unlike Akira, the subject matter of Ghost in the Shell can be easier to pinpoint. What is human? Of course, that oversimplification can and will be recontextualized with each and every rewatch of the film. It can be of gender politics, artificial intelligence and sanctions. It can be the observation of free will or the influence of other scopes or opinions. Or maybe, you could see that's a completely different story. It's all plausible. The greatest strength of the film is its ambiguity and the questions it throws at you. In the 90s, or even before so, it was uncommon having these deep, philosophy-heavy films to come to fruition and see reasonable commercial success. But Ghost in the Shell, an animated movie, manages to pull these ideas and convincingly broaden your mindset because you get invested in the world and atmosphere, and how the characters interact with them. One of the greatest conversations in all of animated films is that talk between the Major and the Puppet Master. You get this subtle, ominous dread approaching as you feel this guy can win at any moment, but you stay intrigued as it's shown that he's not a simple villain and won't do that. He builds a legitimate argument of the meaning of life and why codependence is a crush all living beings hold onto. It's a chilling exchange in both atmosphere and content. And I think the movie does a great job at building these cases, as they're discussed in very matter-of-fact casual sit-downs and are thematically present ideas in the world. These are some really great lines that make you think second time, maybe even third time around. And we need to talk about the animation. In the 90s, computer animation began really sprouting, and Ghost in the Shell was one of the first films of the time that did early experiments with craft. By combining traditional cell animation with CG, a new form of animation, digitally generated animation was created, lending the special effects to seamlessly blend into the scenes concisely and smoothly, like with the Major's camouflage. Alone, it's damn impressive and the creative uses to use in the story's environment to their advantage. On a broader scale, it's a pioneer in this way of animation, where you can see its ripple effects in film nowadays. And dang does it look good on its own. The choreography of the blocking is really smooth and crisp, while it has a very grimy dystopian feel to it all, lending credence to how muddled everything is in an aesthetic lens and even an evolutionary way. Ghost in the Shell, like Akira, is a cyberpunk thriller focused on the deep aspects of mankind not often thought about that really deserves to be watched and rewatched. With revolutionary animation techniques, good writing, a badass main character, and some of the richest viewpoints an anime film, or any animated film in general, can offer. I can see people being turned off by the Byzantine ideas or some of the graphic scenes. But if you're interested in the animation or the really interesting philosophies that frankly are more relevant now than ever, give it a watch. It certainly delivers on a standalone complexity.